Welcome to Good Works Tractors. I'm pretty pumped up today. We are going to use the eight foot finish mower on a 25 horsepower tractor. No, this is not the 1025. It would not lift it up. All right, so that's a, a limitation there of the subcompact tractors. Now I will say, actually had this conversation by email with uh, a viewer this morning that do you really need to lift a finish mower off the ground all the way? And I would argue you might not need to. It's just riding along the ground. If you want to transport it from your barn or your garage out to where you're mowing, what's wrong with just having it on the four wheels just riding along? So I'm going to let you decide that on your own, but we are on a 25 horsepower tractor, so it's going to be the same concept, right? Because we're talking about uh, the engine size, and yes, there's more torque. There's, there's different ratios. That's been brought up before, too, on, on this engine versus a 2025 versus a 1025. Yes, nominal 25 horsepower Yanmar engines, but there's different variations to that. Regardless, while this may be the first time you're seeing this in action, I had a chance to use it already. You can see some clippings on here. Worked really well. I'm excited to show you. Gonna do a few different areas, different kind of situations, all right? This is a finished mower. This is not a brush hog. You can't treat a finished mower like a brush hog. That's just, that's not a good situation. If you need to mow your field two or three times a year, get a brush hog. This is not going to be the tool to tackle multiple types of projects on your lawn and out in the field. A flail mower could be a really good solution for you if you're looking for that. We've done all sorts of videos there. So we're gonna start out easy on this area, just this hillside right next to the garden. We're gonna to move to a, a bumpy lane that we've mowed with the flail mower before. It's, it's grown up again, need to knock that back down. And then I am, just because I know you wanna see it, we're gonna tackle some tall grass, kinda of like what you see in the background. We're gonna see how it does with that. I'm not recommending you use it for that, but I know you wanna see it. So I'm gonna sacrifice my own machine here and show you how it does. I'm not covering features, but if you wanna know more about it, check out the previous video we did. We assembled this whole thing, went over the features, uh, all the, the bells and whistles on this machine here in particular, there are smaller units available. You don't have to go with the, the behemoth eight foot wide unit. You can get a 48, 60, 72, 84, something like that. So a lot of stuff, a lot of info on our website too. Don't forget we do sell and ship all over the country, but with that, let's get to work.
Alrighty folks, so again we have three distinct areas we're doing and the first one is down by the garden, it is a hillside. Alright, so you know a 25 horsepower tractor, it's a bigger 25 horsepower tractor, going down the hill no problem, going up the hill puts more strain on it. So running an eight foot piece of equipment on the backside is definitely going to do that. And now none of these areas are what you would typically use a finish mower, like if you're using your zero turn or a garden tractor to mow your lawn, right? You're not going to typically wait until it's longer than six inches and then and then mow. You're going to be in a weekly cadence where it's maybe five, six inches if you're letting it get that long. Me, I, mine's more like four or five inches when I cut it down. But the point being is that we're, we're still doing more of an extreme scenario here. And so it's not a lawn, but this is an area going up and down a hill and we mowed it down with a flail mower. There's still a lot of dead clippings that you can see all that brown that's in there that's uh, still matted up. And there's certain areas of it that are high enough and the suction of this mower is sucking some of that up and really um, creating a lot of uh, clippings that are laying fresh on top of the ground. But overall, I think the biggest takeaway is the fact of how quickly you can get an area done with a mower this size. It's really incredible. Going up the hill is really the only time that it struggled to stay at the 540 RPMs on the rear PTO. And so why that's an important number is because this is what the mower, and that could be for a tiller, it could be for a brush hog, anything running off that rear PTO is designed to operate most effectively at 540 RPMs, all right? That's gonna be what they, they tested and engineered it at. That's how you're gonna have optimal results, whether you are tilling, finish mowing, brush hogging, whatever it might be. So it did creep down to the 530 to 535 mark going up the hill, but if you slow down a bit more, it will help it kind of catch back up. And so you're going a little bit slower up those hills, but again, we're, we're doing this in an extreme situation. So next up was the lane, and I, I love mowing this lane. I think it's just a really aesthetically pleasing uh, area for me to mow. I think it's really pretty. So I enjoy doing it. Um, it's, uh, we measured it out, I don't know, six, eight hundred thousand feet long. It's a long lane. But we mowed this previously with a flail mower. It did work well, but it was five foot wide. So we have this mower up about as high as it can go. There is one more bushing that we can put and you're gonna see us adjust that later on as it does start to scalp in a couple of areas. But that's what I want you to pay attention to in this area and, and not so much how long the grass is because again, it is pretty long. It's, it's, there's areas as well over a foot long. But I want you to see more of an uneven surface because we have those ruts where kind of the two track is that we drive back and forth. And I want you to see how well it does navigating that. There is an anti-scalp roller in the front middle of this mower as well. But we're able to knock this out very quickly, get into a real groove. You know, I, I was kind of concerned if I may start banging that fence, but uh, just kind of carried along at a really good clip, a good pace, knocked it down just like it wanted to, made easy work of it. But you're gonna see on the strip that we have coming back, we didn't scalp it all going down, but there was a little bit more undulation, more unevenness. And so that's where you can get into trouble with a really wide rotary mower because there's nothing that flexes and gives to the terrain you know I, I used to mow my lawn with a real mower it was 72 inches wide but made up of three individual 24 inch wide mowers and so those would all contour to the 
the undulations in the ground and it just did an amazing job. You don't have that whether it's a finish mower like this or a belly mower underneath your tractor. So I ended up adjusting those bushings, putting it underneath, raised it about another inch or so, and that seemed to completely solve the problem. This is as high as this will mow because you want the mower to rest on the ground on all four of those wheels. So you're, you're kind of just pulling it along, so to speak, not really lifting and that kind of thing. And it is as high as it will cut, but it handled it really well. But the toughest test is yet to come. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Now, listen to this, and, and I want you to hear it. I said it before, but I'm gonna repeat it again. A finished mower is not designed to brush hog a field. This is three foot tall grass here. It's not made to do that. But I wanna show you anyways, because I know you're curious. I'm curious as well to see how it does mowing down a field full of long grass. And now there's no real shrubs big trunks, big woody stems in here of any kind, at least that I can see. And it doesn't mean there's not anything hidden in the weeds. But a lot of you, myself included, sometimes buy a property, a new location, or something gets out of control, or you want to, I don't know, tame a wild jungle out there. And you're wondering if there's one tool that can get a job done. You don't want to invest in a brush hog just for a one-time mow, just to hack everything down. You want to know, can a finished mower struggle through maybe, but get through the long nasty stuff and then be all I need in the future to maintain it on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. So folks, what you're seeing now is a eight foot mower on a 25 horsepower tractor in three foot tall summer grass and weeds going very, very, very slow, but doing a pretty darn good job for one pass. And as much as I still wanna say this is not the right tool for the job. If you only had one time to cut this long, nasty stuff, you didn't have the big obstacles. There's no, there's no shear bolt or, or slip clutch on here to protect things. So if you have stumps and big boulders and that kind of thing, that's gonna be highly problematic for your finish mower. But if it's a nice grassy area, I, I think you may be okay handling that with a finish mower. But I'd be curious to get your thoughts on that. So it's a pretty common question. You know, that's just my opinion. Maybe you guys have done it. I'm sure you have your own opinions too. So for the folks that have this kind of situation to deal with, can you help them out? Give them some more feedback so they can be more confident in how they approach this scenario. Leave a comment down below. So there you have it, the eight foot finish mower on a 25 horsepower tractor. Again, if you have a higher horsepower tractor, you know, I think it's gonna do about the same, to be honest with you, because it's still hitting that 540 RPM. So that's the operating speed. So, you know, you're gonna maintain that speed maybe easier if you have a hilly property or uh, just insanely dense material that could potentially try to slow it up or bog it down a bit more. But this mower is rated up to 70 horsepower. So it's a very versatile mower. You can go all the way down to these little guys here and, and up to the, the, the small utility tractors even and everything in between. So again, that's what we do here. We, we sell the equipment, but we show you what it can do and, and maybe areas that maybe it shouldn't do, but you can still have a good idea of what it's capable of. And these results aren't perfect. These are just as good as brush hogging, maybe, maybe even a little bit better, but it's important for you guys to know that and we can stand behind our product. And Del Marino has been building great high quality equipment for a long time. And this is just another piece that we're adding to our lineup. So if you're looking for a mower of any size or some other piece of equipment for your three point hitch or your front end loader, we would love to earn your business. You gotta check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. We can ship it right to your house. If you have a tractor, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below or maybe watch our 500 plus other videos we have too. We have new videos coming out all the time. It's completely free. We'd love to have you join the community, help other folks out. New tractor owners coming online all the time. They need to know what to do with their equipment and that's what we're trying to do. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.